and welcome into Views from the Sideline. I'm your host, Joey Tysik, my partner, Malik Hill, and we got a lot to talk about. It's getting exciting because we got March Madness right around the corner. So today, first, we're going to start with the NBA All-Star. That actually happened, uh, surprisingly enough. So we'll talk about that real quick. Um, a couple news and notes around the NBA that's going on. And then uh, Michigan and Michigan State played two games last week. So we got to recap those. And then we'll get into previewing conference tournaments. And then we'll talk about some stuff that we're going to try to do next week, as we always do. So right off the bat, NBA All-Star Weekend. Malik, did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Were you okay with it? How, how, what are your feelings about it? Well, honestly, I don't, I don't even think we should call it All-Star Weekend. It was it was NBA All-Star Sunday night. Right. Like is True, true. Yeah, they jammed everything into one night. I mean, I didn't care that much about it because I, I felt like they shouldn't even have done it. Yeah. It was, like, weird from the jump. Once... LeBron instantly came out and said it was a bad idea, which pretty much showed everybody I we we don't this this isn't a good idea. Yeah. So yeah, the skills competition I, I haven't paid attention really to the skills competition since like the mid two thousands. When it was like Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, mm-hmm. when the when the competition was like serious. Yeah. And they actually and tried. every yeah, and every point guard was like elite when it came to high level skills. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, the they're they're, they're NBA players. They're still very skilled. I'm a huge Sabonis guy. I support him and the not the Pacers that much. <laughs> yeah. But, I, yeah, I'm a huge fan of him and Brogdon on the Pacers. It's cool that he won. Vucevic was right there. It I was glad that those two were in the final because those were my two two guys. I've liked Sabonis since college. Me and my dad always talked. Like, figured he would be possibly a really good steal in the, in the NBA, and he's turned out to be that and more probably. And then, of course, my – crazed love of Vucevic I don't know um yeah I, I've kind of grown to dislike the skills competition I understand that they wanted to add big men into it but it's basically become who can hit that final three at the end and to me that's just boring I like to see all the different passes that they used to have to do the extra dribbling they had to do it just made it more enjoyable I know they tried to also they're trying to shorten everything up so that they can fit things in but yeah, I, I think they need to revamp the skills competition in some sort of way. I don't I don't know. I don't know how they do it. The only one I really cared about was the three-point shootout. Yeah. And because I, I love the lineup. Even when they when they added Mike Conley, mm-hmm. I was interested in seeing what he did. And he didn't disappoint. No. And I, I think it's funny because, you know, you get Steph Curry in a three-point contest. But, yeah, we can't get any guys in the dunk contest. And yet, Steph Curry's been in the three-point contest almost every year, every other year at least. I think he's only missed, like, one or so. Uh, in the last few years, and he just makes it so enjoyable to watch. It's unfortunate that you pretty much know he's gonna gonna win for some reason, but I mean, he still makes it exciting. Like even in his win, he just looked insane from the get go. Um, and that we'll talk about it led into the the actual All Star game too, which I only watched half. I watched up to halftime. Um, it was enjoyable for what it was, I guess. Um, seeing Damian Lillard and Steph Curry on the same team is a nightmare. To think if that was ever possible in some some capacity. Um, those guys were just pulling up from half court. Um, and they just had fun with it, which is what you like to see. Like, just have fun, mess around. Them throwing lobs to each other. Uh, throwing lobs to CP3. That, that stretch right there was the only stretch where I was like, okay, this is like, yeah, this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when they threw that hoop to Steph and then CP3 came down and showed he still has a little bit of bounce. Yeah. Uh, Team LeBron ended up winning 170 to 150, whatever. Doesn't really matter. They led the whole time. I think LeBron's like 3 0 now ever since they've done the All Star draft. How did you feel about the uniforms? I hated them. Hated them. <laughs> Chris loved them. So our good pal, I, I don't, our good I don't pal understand. Chris, who moved down to Cleveland to you know disappear for a while, he texted us and he said he loves the new All Star uniforms. I hadn't seen the All Star uniforms at this point, so I was like, okay, I'll give it a chance. I saw the warm ups. I'm like, oh, those are kind of cool, black and yellow. I, I like the vibe. Uh, the skills competition starts. They take off their warm ups. They're blue and yellow jerseys. What? They looked like old school knockoff Pacers jerseys. Exactly. That's like, what I like thought. Like bad knockoffs. 
at, and at first I saw Sabonis take his off. I was like, are they doing some weird thing? Like they're they're matching their All Star jerseys to match their their regular. That's what uniforms? I thought at first too. <laughs> yeah. And then no, it's all blue and yellow. I don't get where that s- scheme came from. Uh, obviously we're both. Uh, you're an esteemed Michigan fan. I'm I'm a fan. And I didn't like the blue and yellow in that scenario. It just looked, it looked weird. I like yeah. where they're. I, I'm a big fan of the '90s, 2000s, where they used to actually wear their jerseys in the All Star game. I know it gets cluttered and it looks messy, but I like it. Or they did. Was it last year where they did black and white? I thought it looked really clean. Um, but blue and yellow, and it, it, like I said, with that font, made it look even more like the classic Pacers. So I don't get where. That inspiration came from. Maybe I don't obviously know my history, but does it? Do you know or hear if it had anything to do with their HBCU um, collaboration thing that they were trying to do? I didn't hear anything about a coll- in terms of like uniforms. I right. Didn't, I didn't hear any collaboration because that's that. the, that's the only thing that came to mind, but I couldn't think of anything that would yeah. even correlate. So <laughs> that, it was and just weird. We we might just not know. Yeah. What the it could be, but yeah, I have no idea. Right. It it didn't look good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll have to talk about Chris. Chris, to talk to that about Chris. I can't speak today. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to him about it. Um but yeah, uh then at halftime, so I watched up until halftime and then I watched the dunk contest before I tuned out of the All-Star. Um we had three dunkers at halftime. Cassius Stanley, Obi Toppin, and Bernie Simons. You probably only know Obi Toppin unless you're us and you know all the players. Um, it was disappointing. Interesting to say the least. <laughs> I'm no, I'm not this, even going to say it was interesting. This is this is the one I, I least cared about. I watched it just because it was on. I liked a few dunks, and mm-hmm. I was surprised about how upset people were about the outcome. Yeah. Even though yeah, the judging was just weird. I didn't understand how the scoring was going. But. And I, I think the hard part too is that a lot of people were noticing that like the judges were sitting up there trying to judge. None of them looked interested from the yeah. get go. <laughs> yeah. Like from the start, they looked like they didn't want to yeah. be there. Josh Smith was kind of laying sitting sideways like, in his they chair. Were, they were like sitting back or they were, yeah. So you already knew that it was just there it, was it, nothing. It almost seemed like they were making bets with each other mm-hmm. to like just. <laughs> I, I bet you won't make. I bet you won't put that number. <laughs> do it. I bet you won't do it. Yeah. And they just do it. And there's yeah. It was it was so weird. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah. it was cool that they had uh you know, Dominique, Josh Smith, Spud Webb, some Atlanta I, guys. I think it was it was weird for them to get all of those judges together for this contest. Yeah. Like it. As as they kept going on, I was like, "Why? Why do you have mm-hmm. this many? Why didn't you just have like three judges?" Yeah, it could have been Spud, Dominique, and then like one other, and then Josh. Yeah, they got the Atlanta guys it's in Atlanta. They got the Atlanta just, guys, and then they threw in Jason Richardson and D Brown. <laughs> D Brown is always down to judge. I guess he's, whenever they call, he's there. But yeah, why did it could have just been the three Atlanta guys? It. Why let's let's go back to the old school. Let's 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 do the cards. Like yeah. I love the dramatic effect of going through the numbers and putting them up instead of this sit back, be lazy, mm-hmm. press a button and just no reaction. Yeah. Like it's it's yeah. And it's always hard too cuz when you get guys like I hate when I'll, I'll be honest. I hate when they get like Dr. J in there because he seems so cynical about all these dunk contests that he like he sees anything cool and he's like, "Oh, I probably could have done that 7." And he just he throws out like low ball numbers constantly. But there there are also times where he reacts like during the Aaron Gordon Zach Levine dunk contest. Yeah. There were a few times where I think he was one of the judges where he reacted a few times. I might yeah. be wrong. Maybe he wasn't. He one could of the judges. be. I'm just saying. I could be making stuff up. <laughs> I just notice a lot of the time it's the older guys, the veteran dunk contest guys that are kind of like, eh, I don't know this. This uh, is they they've seen so many of these. And yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's. Or they just know that they couldn't have done that in their time. I don't know. I don't. I don't have any like harsh words for these NBA legends, obviously. But it's just always kind of funny yeah. to watch. The whole way it was set up was weird. Yeah, honestly, to just do it at halftime and and it it honestly seemed like 
I don't want to sound like the guy that says it's rigged, but like from from Anthony Simon's first dunk, yeah, it kind of seemed like they were just on board with him Win. and everything he did. Yeah. Like I thought it was weird that he went and put on a like old school t- Tracy McGrady jersey. Yeah, and like with the with the Trailblazer shorts, <laughs> yeah, and everything else waist down, mm-hmm. <laughs> Raptors jersey, like does a okay version of the, that dunk, and they're like. Good job, great job. Yeah. What didn't they give him like a forty nine for that dunk? Something like that. I, I was like, he got a lot of high scores it was, for. It was all. It was so weird. Yeah. And then yeah, the non kiss of the rim. It, yeah, it was. It was all off. Yeah. So anyway, it, we're gonna kind of wipe that that one away. Yeah. Doesn't um, count. And it also stinks that there's only three dunkers. The dunk contest is always like very hit or miss in these last few years. Obviously, we've been blessed with Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine. But in the years, like, without those guys, it's just, it's rough. And I don't know, and I always think, too, it stinks because they have to put in so many commercials and things for this, the broadcast these days. Back in the day, people don't rem- remember that there used to be, like, eight dunkers in the dunk contest. Just like the three-point contest has, like, eight guys in it. And they would do, like, three rounds. So I would almost say... Let's scrap the skills competition and add more dunkers uh, back in. Do you really think that would bring back like more popularity back to it? No, but it just <laughs> bring more dunks in. I was about to say then, the skills competition is trash. But what what dunks are going? Are guys going to do? I don't it's know. Eight guys. How? What improvement is or, that? That that might make it. That's just going to make it drag more. Or what if we do a thing that I've heard some people say and get some of the the like professional dunkers not in the nba you know like your jordan kilgannons and stuff like that get I don't, I don't, four of those guys versus four nba guys the nba guys are never gonna win exactly <laughs> <laughs> what kind of pitch is that <laughs> let's make an nba dunk contest where the nba players never win yeah so they can Fantastic. step up their game so they gotta step up their game Listen, i agree that it's it's always been weird to me that NBA players don't like try to do professional dunker type dunks, mm-hmm. but that the, these ideas are terrible, Joey. I don't think <laughs> these so. are horrible. The professional dunker thing, I've heard that from other people. That just takes away from the NBA players. That doesn't add anything to the NBA dunk contest. I just think there was there was a time where even like missed like missed attempts were more entertaining, mm-hmm. like. Dunkers would get silly. Like, Michael Finley with, like, the cartwheel in the 1990s. Everybody, like, jumped up and laughed and clapped. Like, it was funny. Yeah. Daryl Armstrong missing, like, 16 straight reverses and then just ending with a reverse layup. Mm-hmm. And everybody laughs. Like, now when you miss, it's like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> like, it gets tense. Yeah. And people are like, well, that sucks. Like, they're, the fun and the silliness exactly. and those parts – of the dunk contest are gone. Yeah. Now and, it, it's also because it was a time where like the level of dunks weren't so high. Right. So if you did like a double pump, like 180 windmill, it was like, oh my god. But yeah, like all all those elements are gone too. Like yeah. the fun part of it. Yeah, and I get that it's hard to like come up with new stuff because you know we've been doing this forever now. So I, I get that. The other problem that I have too is obviously the star power. Like back in the day, you had MJ, Dominique, Dr. J. Well, I I think people are somewhat like over, even though I, I've said that sometimes too. Once we got into the 90s, it was like Harold Miner and J.R. Ryder and then rookie Kobe, which nobody knew Kobe was going to become Kobe at the time. Mm-hmm. Rookie Kobe, um, the late 90s, like the contests weren't that great in the like Rick Barry won one. Yeah. Not Rick Barry. Uh, Brent Barry, Brent Barry. one one. Like, but he did. It. He jumped from yeah, the free throw line ju- in warm up. So <laughs> jumping on. in from the eighties to the nineties, that's where the nineties became more silly, and yeah. like there was still some excitement. So it was half and half. Mm-hmm. And then there was Vince Carter, and like there's, it's just been a, like a jumbled thing yeah. since then. The early two thousands. Each, each decade has had like a thing yeah. that they stuck with. Yeah, and I think I kind of pointed this out. Um, while watching the dunk contest, there's been eras of the dunk contest where you think like 80s was obviously just kind of star power, big names. 
the 90s was kind of like what you're saying, kind of silly. And you, I mean, you still got like guys like Sean Kemp and stuff in these dunk yeah, contests. That's the one D Brown beat out Sean Kemp with the hide the eyes yeah. dunk in like, yeah, like 92 or 93. Like yeah. there, there was fun, silly, like he pumped up his sneakers before he dunked. And yeah. kids started pumping up their sneakers after that. Like, mm-hmm. Stuff like that, I don't, I don't know if you can do it anymore. Yeah, and then because the it was, it was of its time. And then you think like early two thousands, Vince Carter, Jason Richardson, Josh Smith. That was kind of an, an evolving yeah. area area where they started doing the one eighties yeah. through that's, the legs. That's when that's when dunk started to evolve. Mm-hmm. Jason Richardson like took it to a next level. He kept winning them. Josh Smith can't. Yeah. And then my least favorite era, the prop era, which is the Blake Griffin era. I don't hate the prop era. I just think I do. I think people. <laughs> Don't know, like Aaron Gordon did an incredible job with his having the mascot spin around on the well, hoverboard and catching it and doing the scoop. But I almost that put one that was amazing. I almost put Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon in their own era because they evolved the dunk contest yet again yeah. to where nobody wants to do it because if those guys are in it, they're just winning. Now it's now it's almost untouchable again. Yeah, because they they took it to such a high level mm-hmm. that what do you do now? Because you compare what Aaron Gordon did with the prop compared to like. Man, I think it was oh, – they showed a highlight of it. I can't remember who it was. Um, it might have been hmm, – I don't remember. Which one are you talking about? Uh, somebody jumped over a table. That's it. They jumped uh, over a table. I remember Ger- Gerald Green won in, like, the Vegas year. I think it was 07. Yeah. He jumped over, like, I think like that's, a step. I think like, that's was, who I it thought was, it was. It was, like, a like two-step yeah. thing. And he jumped over that and did a windmill to win. Yeah. So that might have been it. I mean, yeah. Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin ruined. Brought it. out a whole Kia and jumped over it barely. And he could have ju- listen. <laughs> if he wanted to, he could have attempted to jump over the car. Yeah, he had enough hops to do it. And I get you don't want to be injured in a but dunk contest. Bringing out the choir mm-hmm. and having them sing a song for like three minutes while Kenny Smith is hyping people up. Yeah, and then you jump over. Oh the, man! And then the, we we're not even going to talk was about it, that. He wasn't it John Collins? John Collins. He was was he he wasn't in Didn't, contest. Was it John the year Ooh. John Collins a couple years ago when he brought out like the plane? Oh, the Amelia <laughs> And he had the <laughs> the Amelia he had the scarf. Dunk. That one was hilarious. Yeah, but he that missed, didn't he? Didn't he like miss yeah, or he, he broke did. something? That's I wish stuff like more stuff like that happened. The silly funny stuff. Problem is if it's you, a waste of time. If you bring out Amelia Her- Earhart and you completely fail. Everybody should laugh. John Collins should smile and laugh, and then we move on to the next. Like some gimmicks are cool. Like I remember Victor Oladipo when he came out and sung "New York, New York," and then he did like the three sixty reverse dunk. Like that was cool. Yeah. Some gimmicks are cool. I think they're they're just elements that have gone away. That yeah. Is I don't. The dunk contest just isn't what it used to be. Yeah. And yeah, we'll have every four years there will be that one contest. That that brings it back up, but I mean the 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 one thing and the last thing I'll say and we'll move on because we <laughs> talked about the dunk contest for too long, but the the good thing that came out of the the prop era I would say is Dwight Howard and Nate Robinson's little rivalry, the Superman thing. Yeah, yeah. that was kind of cool. That's why yeah there there have been it'll always be like this honestly. People yeah. don't realize it like ebbs and flows. It's not going to be like the '80s again. You'll have these dry spells where you get Fred Jones in the dunk contest. Fred Jones actually almost beat Jason Richardson. He was good, but still, that's why. Just, uh, don't 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 talk about. I'm just listen, saying your to, average fan again doesn't know yeah, who Fred Jones but is. But to me, to me, that dunk he did in 04, where he threw it and like laid out all the way in midair, and like that dunk is so. And honestly, to me. those are some of the coolest dunks for me. I think when you have, uh, when you have to stretch like the farthest to grab it is when it looks the coolest. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's the NBA All Star Sunday night thing that they did. NBA games are going to start back up. We're probably not going to talk a ton about them unless some crazy stuff happens near the trade deadline or whatever. Um, But anyway, some little notes. Blake Griffin got bought out by the Pistons. He moved out of free agency. He is going to sign with the Nets. Great. He's going to dunk in either his first or second game. Well, he's 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 going to be healed. Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie Irving or James is going to throw him an alley oop, mm-hmm. and it's going to look like four years ago. Yeah, he's it's going to just be. He's a reunited with DeAndre Jordan, which is kind of funny. Yeah, um, yeah, that team's going to be uh, unstoppable. So a few years ago, 
if somebody told you this team would be a thing, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, yeah. how do we have reacted? Uh, do you think you was you got to be kidding? You would have thought it was impossible. Yeah, like that's that's an all star team. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Things change, and uh, I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with Blake. I, I, there's been a lot of talk about him coming off the bench, which I think most likely would probably be good for them. Um, and Joe Harris seems to just fit into that starting lineup really well. So we'll see. Um, if Blake is any semblance of like himself when he comes back or when he starts playing for them, uh. He'll definitely add something to their team, if anything. If he looks like he has so far this year, though, it's kind of just a, a lateral move for the Nets. Uh, just gives you a veteran presence. Um, and then another one of our Pistons formers that, you know, we always get to hear about former Pistons going to different places. Andre Drummond is also most likely going to be bought out because Cleveland just can't get a deal done with Andre Drummond because, you know, he doesn't really fit in this era anymore. His contract is pretty large. What? He doesn't fit in this era I, anymore? I still don't think he fits. Unless he's well, your third best listen, option. This isn't... Third or fourth best option. This isn't Roy Hibbert, Greg Monroe we're talking about. It's, they they literally could like could not play. They yeah. couldn't last in the NBA anymore. Andre, was, he was still getting double-doubles and having really good games. It's yeah. just that... The question still is, can he be a big part of winning? I and think I think that's the major question. He just he, he's going to put up his numbers, right? But I think for his money, like big men, for his money just isn't worth it anymore. And I agree. Yeah, his style of player, yeah, he's he's not worth the. Big so contract. like to put him on the books for, with his contract, he's basically like your second best player, which yeah. isn't ever going to work agree out. With that. So, uh, he's rumored to possibly be bought out by the Lakers. There's been some crazy rumors that he could also be bought out by the Nets as well. Uh, which, <laughs> what? Could you imagine? Could you? I don't even know how it works. Uh, yeah. I heard some random stuff. I don't know if Blake Griffin being going to the Nets would uh, cut that off. I've Honestly, I have not looked at the NBA a whole lot recently, so I don't know the landscape of all those situations. But either way, if he goes to the Lakers, that's pretty nuts. Um, I would have even rather him go to the Clippers at this point. Because then it would like I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. I think it would help do the, the Having Lakers Zubach Clippers. as a backup center would be like really high quality. Yeah, I thought Zubac was gonna like. He's still playing well. He's I just, just thought yeah. he was gonna be better because yeah. uh, he was starting to look really good towards the end of his Lakers stint. Yeah. I thought he'd be like a like a thirteen or fourteen and ten guy. Yeah. So we'll see. Two former Pistons getting a chance at a title. Kind of interesting. Hope Andre Drummond doesn't. Hope the best for Blake. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Um, okay, that's all our NBA news. Like I said, we'll be light on NBA unless something big happens or whatnot. Um, there wa- <laughs> what? I, I don't even know why I'm bringing this up. Just for the laughs. Something happened with Myers Leonard. Oh. And we're just going <laughs> to, yeah. Myers, we're just going to leave it at that. Myers Leonard had a racial slur on yeah. his Twitch stream um, playing Call of Duty, which, you know, Many of us youngsters, the, we know that Call of Duty and video games can be frustrating, and you can say this, some things. Through all of this, the part that's been weird to me, even it's not weird because older people don't realize, teenagers have been doing stuff like this to each other for like the past 15, 20 years, yes. ever since online play has began yes. on like Xbox Live and PlayStation. Right around 2007, 2008. Yes. Teenagers have been hurling racial slurs and death threats at each other on a daily basis. Yes. Like, by the minute. 100%. And then they get done playing, and they're like, all right, talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's insane. that like, Most people wouldn't believe it, Yeah, but it's been a thing for a long time. Yeah. The and problem it, is, Myers Leonard is a grown man in the NBA on a live stream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On a live stream. And he tapped into his 15-year-old self out of nowhere, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he's he's just an idiot. I'm, I'm not going to. And I... And I'm not going to, like, defend him, but I understand, like, it's one of those heat of the moment kind of things, but the problem is, like, even if I get frustrated in a game, because, I, I, you know, I still play video games. I still get that way sometimes. You get frustrated. I still have never thought to say any of those things. Exactly. And I can understand if he really didn't know what the word is. But I'm never. Gonna, I, I don't. I don't think that excuse was true. I think. I, I don't, think he tried to backpedal. I don't necessarily either. But like, 
the other problem is if you don't know what a word is, especially at your age, <laughs> I would I would be looking exactly. it up on Google, being like, what am I even saying to this kid? At the end of the day, it all comes down to he's it was it was one of the biggest idiot moves. Yeah, from an NBA player, maybe in years. Yeah, because you, you're not 15 anymore, Myers. Yeah, this isn't 2000, 2006 Xbox 360. Like this isn't Halo. Yeah. This isn't you can you this can't do that anymore. That's literally where I learned all you, those words you, from. You cannot do that stuff anymore. Many words that you are not supposed to say I learned in this is a regular video game lobbies. just a regular part of the lobbies. Yeah. yeah. So That's, I I wish journalists and like I watched Skip and Shannon this morning on uh FS1 and they have no idea. They were like this isn't a, a regular part of gaming. This ain't normal. I was I wish I could have jumped into that TV yeah. and been like Shannon actually. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, these teenagers out here, <laughs> they say some wild stuff on a regular basis. Man. Yeah, because there's no there's no confrontation because you're not face to face. It's there, all over the there internet. There are no adults monitoring them. Is it's like Twitter before Twitter, to be honest. That's a, that's one heck of an analogy. Right there. <laughs> so yeah. I, it's a, a place where you can just go nuts. Yeah, it's where people have no. There's no problem. Yeah, like. And now the problem is that you're live streaming. Like you are, Ex yeah. You are talking while many people are watching you, so you have to be very careful of what Kid, you're saying. A lot of kids, yeah, mostly kids watching these live streams. Yeah, like he he just he had a war flashback from '07 or something. It was. And he lost himself. It was, it's it, not. It's really. It's not funny. It's not funny. No. But he he's yeah. It's it's bad. Mm hmm. Yeah. So. Anyway, moving yeah, on. That was. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of glad moving you brought on. that up though. Yeah. Um. Okay. So Michigan and Michigan State they played twice last week. On Thursday, Michigan destroyed Michigan State. Yeah. Looked like Listen, uh, we, can, we can we can just quick sum up of this game. Yeah. Looks like 15, another game. Michigan State looked like they have for for like most of the season mm -hmm. outside of their hot streak they were on. Yeah. Michigan wins the regular season Big Ten title. Hooray. I got questions for you about this second game. Okay. So on Sunday, <laughs> it was a much yeah. closer game. Um, Eli Brooks went out uh, somewhat early. In like the first five minutes. Yeah. Um, From that point on, Michigan State like kicked it into gear. and Yeah. Um, hurt his ankle, I believe, right? Yeah. It looked like a bad ankle sprain. Who knows how long. Hopefully, yeah. he's only out for like a week, maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of question marks still. Nobody's really said anything yeah. about uh, his status going forward. Um, but that's a little bit of a concern for Michigan. Um, but Michigan State just started to put it on Michigan. Um, Hunter Dickinson got into some foul trouble. He really he couldn't, he couldn't struggled. Get it, he couldn't get it going until the last like six minutes. Yeah. He started to get it going, but it was too late. Yep, just a little too late for them. Um, the big thing for Michigan on the Thursday game was – uh, Franz Wagner, Hunter Dickinson, Isaiah Livers, they were all, yeah. you know, their normal selves. On Sunday, they all stunk. It looks in the Illinois game, it was more like it was worse. Mm -hmm. This game, they they still like they kept they hung it. around. Yeah, they hung around and they were able to hit shots and stay in it, but they looked like they've run out of gas. They looked like they need a break. Mm -hmm. They 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 might be like mentally tired as well as well as physically tired. Yeah. Because yeah, coming off of that stretch from COVID. They just had to rattle off games and just keep going. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm not surprised that they, they look like they've run out of some gas. Yeah. And, luckily, they were able to get a little bit of a break before they jump into, I think, did they play third, what, Friday or? They play Friday. I yeah. But, yeah, I have some questions for you about Michigan State. Okay. Um, First of all, are you angry or happy about what you saw during that game? First question. Am I angry or am I happy? Because I think there's a lot more reason to be angry about what you saw during that entire game. <laughs> so I, I guess what you're what you're alluding to by being angry is seeing Rocket Watts have a really good game. Not just that; that's a part partially, of it, but yeah. Um, even though he almost kind of threw it away towards the end. Yeah, that was a bad turnover. <laughs> Although when he was trapped, like you shouldn't throw it to him. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. Um, or is there more of an in between? That could, it could I, be that. Too. I would say it's more of an in between. I don't know if I was like a hundred percent happy because Michigan wasn't playing at their best. Granted, you have to take advantage of those situations. Um, it was nice to see 
Rocket have a good game. They needed somebody else to step we up. All, we all knew Aaron Henry was going to step up for this right. one. Right. He's been playing good down the stretch. Um, Langford. He, he, hit, he hit that big three. Langford can't do anything until the last minute when they need a big <laughs> shot, which is, I mean, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So that in and of itself uh, is exactly how I feel. Like, I, I still don't know. I still don't know what to do with this team. So, like, some people are starting to say, oh, this team can now make a Sweet 16 run. This team could still get knocked out in the first round, yeah. depending on who it, they play. It could go either way. Because if you have to, if Michigan State is going to play, like, I'm the thing that I'm scared of for Michigan State is they don't shoot well. They have to attack the basket, but they don't move the ball that well. What if they have to go against a team like BYU that just shoots up threes constantly? You see that all the time in tournaments where the team that just fires threes and they start hitting, you can't come back from that because all of a sudden you're down 20 points because they've hit like five straight threes. What does Michigan State do if they're down like that? Yeah, my, they don't have a comeback way. They have to win wire to wire. You, you kind of just you, you just went into it. My lead-up question was going to be, now that you've seen that they've had the ability to play this way all season, mm -hmm. MSU fans can stop talking about the talent problem they can stop, like, all, all the outside answers they wanted to go to. There were clear reasons why this was all happening. Mm -hmm. That Rocket Watts was there the entire season. But there are factors of why it never came out. Marcus Bingham, he was, he was a demon in terms of, like, how active he was on the board yesterday. Yeah. You think that just was never there? Right. It was, like, you think that was just never there? Yeah. Like. These things are there, and these players have abilities that aren't tapped into or haven't been paid attention to or have just been set to the side because they want them to play a certain way. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing that I'll, I think you'll agree with me on. Um, I heard a lot of like news, Michigan State fans, everywhere. People are praising Izzo. For how he's turned this team around and his coaching. And I don't understand it. I know we've been talking about it, but even I, I was I listening. Think, I think it's I think it's that it's that group of Izzo fans that will never yeah. like go away. Yeah. The ones that will stay loyal and praise him till the till the end. Yeah. I think it's those that section of Michigan State fans. And there's I I've I've seen some Michigan State fans that have been like, this season is a waste. Yeah. And it's it's mostly because of like this coaching staff and what they did and what Izzo has done this season. Yeah. I saw a lot of that from Twitter, like during that game and after the game too, that like they've, they wasted what this team could have been. Yeah. And then uh, on like radio 97, one, which they're usually a little bit biased towards Michigan state just because of Mike and Rico, but like Mike is usually, he he's usually, yeah. he, he's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the past few years, he's been extra hard on Izzo. Yeah. So he's been pretty good about it, but, uh, their big thing was saying, like, or at least Rico was kind of talking about how um, Izzo just turned this team around. And I I don't see, like, they were talking about how, like, they get his, Izzo gets his tournament lineup locked in. Okay, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. He did it, and then he pulled away from it, and then they lost. And then they, now he had to go back to it. So, like, what, there's still problems listen, there because listen, he's not being consistent. Listen to what you just said. He had to go back to it. Right, exactly. Why is that a thing? Exactly. Why is it that he has to go back to a lineup, right. but he doesn't want to play it? Especially when you're basically in a win-or-go-home scenario the rest of the season like he was. And he backed off on Maryland, and then they lost. And now who do they get to play in the first round of the Big Ten tournament? Maryland. Ugh, I just don't know. I, I get it. Like, Izzo... He's probably put in some good words to get this team rallied and ready. But at the same time, he's making mistakes on his own that are almost contradicting what he's probably saying to these guys. So then you get all sorts of mixed stuff going on. Obviously, we don't know exactly what he's saying in these lineups or huddles or whatever because we're, we're not there. Um, so we're just speculating. But at the same time, from what we're seeing on the court, that would make the most sense. So I don't know why Izzo is getting so much praise for this. I know that like he's the face of the team. Who else are you really going to give praise to? Aaron Henry's been doing this for a Aaron couple Henry, weeks. Aaron Henry is who they should be praising. 
He has he has literally put this team on his back. If it wasn't for his play, how many how many of these games do you think they would have won? Yeah, and if he's probably elevating him, the play of his other exa- teammates. He's averaging. He has to be averaging like twenty one, like six and six, like the past like two mm-hmm. week or two. Yeah, like he's playing out of his mind, and most of those stretches, they wouldn't have beaten Indiana if it wasn't for him. Yeah, they couldn't score outside of him. And he scored like the last 14 points of the game mm-hmm. for them to beat out Indiana. Yep. Like whenever he goes into a dry spell, everything else falls apart. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, and you know what's funny? Because now I'm looking up the stats because I had to. My man, A.J. Hoggard, only played nine minutes in this game against Michigan. 0 for 2. I, I love that it's... It's the first time I've heard my man in a negative, <laughs> like, way. Yeah, my guy, A.J. Hoggard. And I never wish <laughs> – I don't ever wish any ill will on any of these players, obviously. He, just, he shouldn't be playing as but, much as – yeah. He look, shouldn't be playing as much. You look at the minutes. Rocket played 33 minutes. Aaron Henry played 37. How many did – uh? was it was it Izzo or Hoiberg? Was it his son that Hoiberg. played? Hoiberg. Yeah. Hoiberg played seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, I when he got in there, I was like, what? <laughs> but whatever. Um, And then it, to show, like – Michigan didn't take this game lightly like some people thought maybe would happen. Isaiah Livers played 37 minutes. Yeah, they just, they just missed a whole bunch of open shots. Franz played 35. Uh, Mike Smith played 36. Like, they all tried. Um, the problem is going to be replacing Eli Brooks, I think. Yeah. And a lot of that, people... That's, that's if it's a, like, bad sprain. And so, he's out for, a, like, a more than a week or two. So here's my question to you, because this is what 97-1 was bringing up, is that do you think... I, or Eli Brooks is the glue guy that's going to keep this team together. Like, if Eli Brooks is healthy, Final Four, if he's hurt, do you think they could get an early round exit? Because he kind of, it seems like when he doesn't play, the team struggles. I, I think they'll make it to the Sweet 16. I think even without him, they could make it. Because the, the thing is, Isaiah Livers and Franz and Hunter, if they get going early, yeah then I, I think they'd probably beat MSU if they all get it going early because mm-hmm. they kept getting close. And that, I think if Langford didn't hit that three in the last, like, 30 seconds, yeah, I think Michigan most likely either ties it and goes into overtime or hits a shot to go. Like, Isaiah Livers had that wide open three with, like, with less than 30 seconds, missed it, and, like, that closed the window. They were right there to, like, get it done. Mm-hmm. I, I trust Shondi Brown to start at the two. Because I think he would almost raise his intensity level, like on defense, and he would he'd be even more locked in if he was a starter, probably to me. And yeah. I think playing Zeb Jackson in spot minutes like they did when they brought Zeb in the game, like they went on a little bit of a run and they still were able to score mm-hmm. because he was making good decisions and not like doing crazy stuff. Yeah. So I I still think they could win first two rounds without Eli and having Shondi starting at the two, but Sweet Sixteen on like I yeah it's it's up in the air at that point. I think even with Eli Brooks, it's basically Final Four or bust. Um, with, I mean, obviously, I mean, without him, it's not Final Four or bust because that's that's a key piece that's gone. Uh, to me, I think it is. But if they get out in the Sweet Sixteen or Elite Eight or something, I wouldn't be surprised. I guess, but because they're having such a good season, I think it's still like a failed season if they don't make it. Even with the injury, I, I understand it. Um, I just think this team is too good, even without Eli Brooks. And that would just mean that Hunter Dickinson is going to have to get out. He's kind of been in a little bit of a funk recently. Yeah. Hasn't played as well as he was early on in the season. Um, and then um, he's going to have to clean up his fouls a little bit um, because they're going to need him in more minutes if Eli Brooks is going to be out for an extended period of time. Hopefully he's not, um, but we'll see. I still just think that this Michigan team, even without Eli Brooks, is too good to not make it but i i think they've it's we see now there's there's a clear shooting disadvantage when eli isn't in when he's in the game like I, it, it seems like everybody else like shoots better yeah and like plays better because mm-hmm. like he's i think isaiah is shooting like 44 percent from three i think eli's like right around there or right behind him mm-hmm. like once he starts going they're like the offense starts to get into a rhythm because he can. He's also shown he can take people off the dribble and like score at the basket too. Yeah. So he's he's one of those guys that when the offense goes into a little bit of a drought, he'll hit a three or get a bucket and then things start swinging again. When yeah. He's out. 
and there's not a guy that can like instantly hit that three or he has the composure as that senior to not be worried, pump fake, floater, or layup. Like, mm-hmm. I still think Shondi could do that. He made some of those plays in the second half. But, yeah, it'll it'll be hard without Eli, even though they're still a really good team. Yeah, and I think part of it will depend on what the bracket looks like come Sunday uh, because there's – I mean, Michigan's going to be a one seed unless – I guess if they faltered in the, the Big Ten tournament, uh, that's a possibility. But – I see them going through the Big Ten tournament, being a one seed, and then yeah. they should have an easy route to at least the Sweet 16, I would think. Um, but it could be even easier depending on uh, what's going on. Right now, I think the 3-4-5 is Illinois, Michigan, Iowa. And then Ohio State is either yeah. like at 10 or like right outside mm-hmm. the top 10. Yeah. So Iowa could like sneak into that number one if they make a run. Yeah. Illinois could win the like, there's a few options for who could win the tournament. Yeah, because right now the number one seeds in the country are Baylor, Gonzaga, Illinois, and Michigan, as it sits right now. So, yeah, there's there's some movement, and it, it's going to a lot depend on the Big Ten tournament. Illinois is looking scary right now. Yeah. Because the more, the more they've played Andre Curbelo, mm-hmm. and now that like he's the starting net point guard, he's he's ridiculous. For a freshman, his IQ and his like level of savvy is out of this world. Yeah. Like, he... He still makes some mistakes every now and then, like trying to be too flashy, but mm-hmm. he's just so like, yeah. Yep. He makes defense look like fools. <laughs> yeah. So we got, I mean, the Big Ten tournament starting today. Uh, what is the matchup? Minnesota's playing. Is it Penn State? Northwestern. Or it might, I think it Minnesota. Northwestern. I think it's Minnesota, Northwestern, and then Penn State Rutgers, I believe, Penn State. today. Uh, that's the first round. ACC already started. Yep, ACC started. Notre Dame won on a buzzer beater last night. Mm-hmm. March is in full swing. Yeah, I'm excited because like he, Malik sent me the text last night showing that Notre Dame won at the buzzer, saying it's March, and now it really does feel like March. You get buzzer beaters, you get excitement. And that was the first round of the ACC tournament. Um, Michigan State plays Maryland tomorrow morning bright and early i think i think it's like 11 30 so, see i i'm really odd it's a complete 50 50 of the the team that comes out and plays in that game mm-hmm. nobody knows yeah and i think michigan state is pretty much solidified now into the tournament yeah uh they're probably going to be like a 10 or 11 seed but most now likely 11 yeah. unless they make a weird run in this tournament but this is now where they can bolster their position uh depending on what they do um in this tournament which of course you know, you got to get through Maryland first, which the last time that you played Maryland, they they smacked you up a little bit. So, you have a prediction for who wins the Big Ten tournament? This is all, on to the, be on the honest, spot. I have no idea. Okay, so I'm look, yeah, looking yeah. at the bracket real so. quick. So, Michigan State plays Maryland tomorrow. Ohio State's going to play the winner of Minnesota and Northwestern. Uh, Indiana is going to play. Oh wait, it's Nebraska, Penn State. That would make sense. Nebraska is awful. Um, Indiana is going to play Rutgers. Uh, Wisconsin will get the winner of Nebraska, Penn State. And then Michigan is going to await the winner of Michigan State, Maryland, which is very yeah. interesting because those teams have seen each other recently. Um, Purdue is going to get the winner of Ohio State. Or Minnesota Northwestern, which I would assume it's going to be Ohio State, Purdue. Um, Illinois is going to get Indiana or Rutgers. That one could be a toss up. Iowa is going to get most likely Wisconsin. I mean, just because they have the one seed, I would say Michigan obviously has the easiest route because they got to play Ohio State or Purdue. Um, Illinois and Iowa are going to have to eventually meet up, which will be tough. I'm going to go with a surprise. I'm going to go with Iowa. There was a long time where I felt like they were the best team in the Big Ten. Um, I still think they're they're a scary team to have to face, obviously. Any Big team, Big Ten team, really, in this, this top five or so are really spooky. Purdue's even surging at the moment. Um, but I just think Iowa's got something that, I don't know. I just, there's something about Iowa that I just feel like they might they might be able to do this. Um, and they match up well with Michigan if they make it to the final. I think it's a fun matchup, even though Michigan 
laid the brakes on them last time. Uh, so there might be a, some, some revenge there, or Michigan will just feel comfortable and come back. But I'm going to guess Iowa, Michigan, Iowa taking the Big Ten tournament, surprisingly. What do you got? Any going, predictions for yourself? I'm going Illinois. Okay. They are like, nobody has a good matchup for Kofi Coburn right now. Mm-hmm. Ayo Desumu is back to himself. Trent Frazier is shooting really well. Adam Miller is more confident. Andre Corbello is like pretty much the, not the leader because Io is the leader, but on the court, he makes it happen. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that gets the ball first and makes everything move. And they have guys off the bench that can hit shots, and they're not afraid either. Yeah. I honestly, I, I'm, I'm going to take Illinois. That's probably a boring pick, but, <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're, they're playing so well right now. Yeah. And I don't see them, like, running out of gas anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. A um, couple other notable things. Unfortunately for Malik, Oakland University lost <laughs> – it's, 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 it's listen. It's hard for both of us. I I would not say unfortunately when it comes to this team. All, although I know one of the coaches on the staff, so kind of sucks. Yeah. But it hurt me more when I was there when they were at the top of the league like every single right. year and got upset in the first round like every single year. Mm-hmm. This time they they got a lot better during conference play. Was able to make it to the conference championship and then they they clearly weren't ready mm-hmm. to win it all. So. Once again, maybe next year. Yeah, and hats off to Cleveland State. They've been they've yeah. been rolling. Their their story is insane. Yeah, they were horrible two years ago. Mm-hmm. Got a new coach, turned it around immediately in two years. Yeah, now they're on the way to the tournament. Mm-hmm. Even if, it would have been cool to see Oakland in the tournament again, but just wasn't to be. Um, Shouts out Norris Cole. He went to Cleveland State. Norris. Shouts Cole. out Norris. Cole. I haven't heard that name in a long time. <laughs> it's been a minute. Uh, Oral Roberts won the Summit League in a really good game, actually over. Uh, South, well, South actually, Dakota State? They, they blew out South Dakota. What? They I thought beat, it was they close. They beat them by like 30. What? No. That, that wasn't a close game. No, it was close. The Oral Roberts one wasn't close. No, it was close. They, they won by it was like close. 30. Watch when Tuesday. you check the score. Tuesday. Tuesday they won Tuesday. like 80-something to 50-something. Oral Roberts over North Dakota State. Summit League final. What was the score? 75 to 72, Malik. Okay, I got this. What? It's, a, it's another game I'm thinking about then. <laughs> I'm no, sorry, it was a good game. game. Wrong game. It was like a close, close game, wire to wire. I thought, or what game? Was a, which game was a blowout yesterday? One, one of the championship games was a blowout. Um, or no, it wasn't. It was the Duke Boston College game. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're thinking. It of. wasn't a championship game. No, that was the first was round the of the ACC. Oh my God, uh, I'm sorry about that one. Yeah, I got it all mixed up. Anyway, <laughs> so Oral Roberts punched their ticket. Cleveland State punched their ticket. Another team that punched their ticket, unfortunately, who had already punched their ticket is Gonzaga. A BYU was they were punching they were them fighting. in the mouth for most of the game. And me, in my negligence of college basketball this season, did not realize that Matt Harms had transferred to BYU, which was insane. Yeah. BYU is going to be one of my teams to watch out for but in the tournament. Gonzaga showed something last night. Mm-hmm. BYU gave them every punch they had. And they still ended up winning by 10. Yep. Gonzaga is not Jaylen, down by double digits very often. Jalen Suggs in that last two minutes was a top three pick. He yep. was he was hitting step back threes and like mm-hmm. he he was just he took all the air out of BYU. A lot of guys talking this morning about Jalen Suggs over Cade Cunningham at the moment. I think that's no. hindsight, but <laughs> no. that's just what they're thinking. Um another team that punched their ticket, our boys at Drexel. I, I'm I'm a, are they the Dragons? Uh, I believe the so, Drexel yeah. Dragons. I believe so. I, yeah. I love I love that so much. So uh, they won over Elon, not related to Elon Musk. Shout out James Posey. <laughs> he went to Drexel. I'm gonna just start pulling out everybody that went to these schools. I don't have an Elon alum, but I Dre- mean, I'm, Drexel, I'm glad Drexel you know won. Them. Shout out James Posey. Uh, the Northeast Conference Tournament Final: Mount St. Mary's beat Bryant. 73 to 68. There they, aren't any moments St. Mary's pros. <laughs> They've punched their ticket. I'm sure there is. As, there is There's a, a a little point guard that was on their summer league roster a few years ago. I don't think he made the team. I feel like can't remember his name. He was like 5'5". Five, five. He could dunk. They always got short point guards. Shout out to Mount St. Murray's. I said Murray's. Mount St. Mary. <laughs> yeah, so those are the teams, you know, all the smaller conferences that have uh yeah, what are you talking about, Malik? 
Fred Carter. <laughs> you said that like we knew who that was. <laughs> who was Fred Carter? Played in 1969. Okay, go on somewhere. Move on. From Milwaukee, Next Philadelphia, and Washington. Next game. Stop it. No. Um, that's basically. I mean, that's basically all the games. Uh, got, at least the conference finals. Yeah, got a few finals today. We got um. Oh, what are the finals today? I just closed out of the app. Um, who do we have? Finals today. I think there are like three of them. I know all the ACC, SEC, Big East. Everything's Start starting today. up now. Yeah, everything starts today. Um, I'm not seeing any finals today. I swear, if I pull into this thing and I find a few finals, <laughs> I'm seeing get... Big East. I'm seeing a lot of first rounds. Patriot leagues in their semifinal. Round, 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 Maybe we can get Colgate back in the tournament. Telling you, first rounds. You're lucky this time, Joseph. Patriot League is in their semifinals. We got Loyola, Army, um, what I say, Bucknell and Colgate. Georgetown is beating Marquette 22 to eight right now. Jeez. Georgetown has only won like 10 games for the season. Marquette, we got Arkansas, uh, Pine so. Bluff, and Jackson State playing each other right now. Big game. A big game. Are you sure about that? The SWAC tournament quarterfinal. People care about Deion Sanders and Jackson State's football program right now. Not much noise on the basketball front. Well, Deion Sanders will make the noise. Um, so, yeah, we got all the big tournaments kind of starting up. Syracuse beat NC State. I'm curious about the ACC tournament. Did you I, know Jim Beheim's son is their best player this season? Buddy Beheim. I had heard about it. And he's a – watch his highlights. I, 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 I want to see what you think about his form. He's a – He's a pure shooter through and through. He went six to twelve from three in this game, twenty seven points. Okay, he's he's just a marksman. All righty. Um, yeah, I'm I'm curious about the ACC because the ACC this year is a toss up. Um, Miami actually looked pretty good yesterday. They're losing to Clemson right now at the half. I expect Clemson to pull to pull that one out. Uh, we got obviously Duke. Uh, they're playing Louisville tonight. There's Kyle and Stanford play on the Pac-12 network. I need them to cut it out <laughs> with their regional network that used to be on Comcast here, but it isn't anymore. Yeah, they need to stop it. Just there's, put it on ESPN. There's a lot of like or FS1, like Big East, Big 12, ACC. There's a I could, I feel like there's a lot of toss up there because none of those teams are like jump. They don't like jump out at you necessarily. So I'm curious to see what's gonna happen in the Big East. I'm pulling for St. John's. Because they they have a few players. They have a point guard named Posh Alexander. Mm. He's like six. He's like five eleven, six foot, super athletic. He's he's just like a bulldog. Yeah. Like he he gets into people on defense like almost full court. He'll steal it from you if you don't like pay attention. He's he's a pretty good guy. Yeah. yeah. Like and then there's teams there's teams like uh, Xavier that are trying to like stay alive in the tournament. They're on COVID pause for a while. Yeah, and they're trying to make it. Um, into the tournament, they're kind of on the edge of being out. Big games, though, tomorrow, like we said, Michigan State and Maryland. Um, but Oklahoma State, West Virginia, that's going to be a good Oklahoma one. Oklahoma State just beat West Virginia without Kay Cunningham. Yeah. People need to look out for Mike Boynton, mm -hmm. coach of Oklahoma State. He's done an incredible job. Yeah. So I'm more excited for tomorrow when you start to see some of the bigger name teams. Michigan State at 1130. Get oh. into it. Uh, watch out for... Uh, Santa Barbara. They're a team. <laughs> they are a team. <laughs> like I love, I love the analysis. No, they're they're a team. They're a good team. Did you did you just look at their record and see nineteen and four and no? I've been their... watching them for a little bit because they were on like are, are really yeah. You you've been watching UC Santa Barbara. Yes. Have you watched one second of San Diego State this season? No, Malik. Oh my god! I leave you to that. You pit the. <laughs> Of all the West Coast teams, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Because people started talking about UC Santa Barbara, and I was like, who are they? And I started watching. They're kind of fun, fun team to watch. Come on, don't hate. You are. <laughs> don't. Who are you? <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to right now, Mr. Don't Hate. San Diego State versus TBD in the corner final because they're too good to have a matchup right now. They got to wait to see who plays them. Watch. 20 and 4. Watch Seton Hall beat St. John's tomorrow. Don't don't wish that. <laughs> There's a guy for Seton Hall that I need you to check out. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Sandro. Yet. Yes. I it, he is, is the first. He is like he's a six ten, 
like point forward. He can like he he can hit the three. He's athletic. He can score in the post. He does everything for Seton Hall. And he's Kalash he's like Vili. he's Vili. he's a legit NBA prospect. Like he's really good. Yeah, I mean I always like the Seton Hall teams. They always got they always got somebody on their teams. Um, but yeah, I I feel like a lot of the big or bigger games start tomorrow. You start to see um some of the bigger names. Eastern Kansas, Washington Baylor. is waiting in their quarterfinal. Shouts out to Rodney Stuckey. You and your random. Hey, he's a piston. I had to bring him up. I know. I had to mention him. I don't think there's any finals tomorrow either, though. Wait, there's got to be because there was a semifinal today. There's a lot of quarterfinals, quarterfinals. No, so we're not going to get the finals for a lot of the teams aren't going to start punching tickets for the most part until um, Friday. Yep. Friday, I believe. Maybe even into the weekend. Yep, it's not till Saturday, Sunday, where any of the finals are. Anyway, we've been rambling on, just looking at games and schedules. Uh, next week, we are going to try to do our full two-hour tournament breakdown because there's going to be Selection Sunday. We'll briefly talk over um, some conference championship stuff, maybe. Probably Big Ten. But other than that, we're going to move on right to the tournament, get into the Selection Sunday stuff. Any surprises for the seeding? things like that, and then we're just going to dive right into it. We're going to do all our picks. We're going to try to get some guests in. Uh, we'll probably have to do it over Zoom, of, of course. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but could you possibly pick a 16 seed this year, Joey? No. Is, is it? Oh, you you don't want to you don't want to no. roll those dice, huh? No. You're a, it's you're, only happened once. You're a safe bracket guy? <laughs> it's only ever happened once, Malik. Are you going to pick a 15? Do we have the Labradors back in the tournament? Are you going to pick a 15? Potentially. I guess I'll take that. Potentially. Al- right now, Alabama's sitting at a two seed. No, say, I'm not taking a, a 15 to beat Alabama. <laughs> Why would you, of all, of, of all the two seeds, I'm not taking them. What are the two seeds right now? Alabama, it's Alabama Houston. Is, yeah, Houston. I don't know what the uh, other part. Ohio State. Ohio State. And one other team that I can't remember. I can see Ohio State. It depends. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. we it's it's gonna be hard to tell. I got a couple upset. It's, uh, it's unpredictable. Though. I got some teams that could throw some upsets out there. If you don't pick at least a twelve and a thirteen, well, yeah, it will be a huge. I'm not that safe of a bracket guy. I'm I'm happy you were watch out for me Drake. For watch out for the Bulldogs. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a that's a safe thirteen. I mean, they're they're like twenty. It's still a. Th- <laughs> they're like twenty five and five on the season. I mean, come on. Loyola, Chicago, How, Drake. That's Those the are safe ones. How but far are we on. taking Loyola? Not as far as before. Oh, Crutwig's so like the are, remaining guy. You are, the, he's the one. Oh, my he's God. He's the remaining guy. You don't even remember any. You, you can't name I can't remember person. the point guard, but he was electric. Oh, so so you're, you're not. You don't have any <laughs> belief in Braden Norris is what you're telling me. A guy that went 5 or 7 from 3 in the championship game over the past weekend, sir. Well, you know. I'm a fake fan. What can I see? I'm what not, can I say? <laughs> I I don't ha- I don't have faith in your picks now. Hey, I got to do all my research over the weekend. Okay, give me some, give me some breaks. I, I got a couple like, teams in mind. I feel like you're gonna do some fake cramming, not any real cramming. No, I do real cramming. Okay, I don't fake it. I ex- I expect some some out of the out you of know what I, picks. You know from experience when I pick my guys. I stick with those Listen, guys. I'm going to tell you right now, Oral Roberts point guard led the nation with 24 points a game. Okay, well. We, and they won the conference tournament, so watch out for him. I'll tell they you. are matched up with because he is electric. I'll tell you, though, if you go into the tournament with too much knowledge, that's where your bracket goes wrong. You start overthinking it. If you go in with too much knowledge. and you I try learned that to, a long time ago picking. If you go in with too much knowledge and try to play it safe, that's where you go wrong. That's where I used to go wrong. I tried to be sensible with my brackets <laughs> when I was in high school. Yeah. And then I realized, nah. Yeah. Have the knowledge, but also throw some caution to the wind, people. Yep. I have a couple standards that I set every year of these are the type of teams that I will pick for upsets, and that's what I kind of stick with. And then every once in a while, it's like, I want to see these guys move on. Loyola, Loyola Chicago had their, their time in the spotlight. It's time for somebody else to step up. UC Santa Or Park. is it time for the return? <laughs> I don't think so. Cinderella 2. 
which most people haven't seen. We'll see when we get the bracket going. We'll see. But this has been views from the sideline. Next week's episode is going to be super spicy. And if Malik brings this kind of energy next week, it's going to be real fun. We'll see you guys next time. Expectations for you are kind of low right now, sir. You need to be spicy too.